Hello everyone, I am Ibrahim Tufaha, a computer science undergraduate student from Jordan University of Science and Technology. Today, I will talk about our work on Arabic text decortization, Tashkil al-Nusus al using deep neural networks. Why do we need decortization and why the use of neural networks? The presentation will go as follows. First, we will talk about the Arabic language and the decortization. Then, mention the available resources for the problem at hand, specifically Tashkila Corpus. List the existing systems and their approaches. And, discuss how to measure performance of such systems. We face issues in these points. We will discuss how we can overcome these problems. The community of Arabic speakers has one of the largest growth rates on the internet, increasing the interest in Arabic natural language processing over the years. Yet, the work on NLP is lacking due to poor investing efforts and the lack of linguistic resources available for researchers and developers. Arabic differs from most other languages in mainly two things, the right-to-left writing style and the addition of diacritics to each letter. Diacritics are super important as they have huge influence on the meaning of the sentence where changing one or two diacritics might give the sentence a whole different meaning. This makes diacritics important for both understanding the content when reading a book or listening to the news and other applications like Arabic text-to-speech. We will be discussing standard Arabic only because colloquial Arabic diacritization is not as important. Also, standard Arabic is split into classical Arabic like old books and poetry and modern standard Arabic, which is used in today's books, news, articles, and magazines. Here's an example explaining the dependencies between words and how context from both left and right can have an impact on the word's diacritization. If we have the incomplete sentence, ذهب علي, then, depending on the last word, the first word might be ذهب, meaning went, or ذهبوا meaning gold. When we talk about machine learning and neural networks, the first big concern we have is the data sets. Are they available? Are they big enough? For the diacritization problem, two main data sets are available online. The first one being the LDC Arabic Tree Bank. This is an MSA only data set that costs up to $4,500 to obtain the license. The other one is Tashkila Corpus, that is open source. In both cases, we have problems where the first dataset is usually too expensive and the second dataset has issues that should be fixed as will be discussed later. Tashkila Corpus consists of 97 books of CA and 293 MSA files compiled from books, articles, news, speeches, and school lessons. The size of MSA is tiny compared to CA, where MSA has about 800,000 words only, while CA has 66.5 million words. With manual inspection, we found a lot of issues in Tashkila corpus and inconsistencies even within the same lines, where two words might follow two different schools' conventions for diacritization. Here we present some of the issues we faced in Tashkila and how to fix them. The first issue was that some diacritics are on the last letter of the word, but they are separated from it with one or more white spaces. The second issue was that some diacritics follow non-Arabic letters such as white spaces, numbers, and punctuations. Another issue is that multiple diacritics appear on a single character. We also found that when an extra alif is added, the Fathatan placement differs depending on the school and conventions followed. One puts it immediately after the letter, and the other one puts it on the alif itself. We also found lines and files completely undiacritized, and found that single paragraphs might be split across different lines. To clean up Tashkila, we did the following steps. As some files had HTML tags, we used BeautifulSoup to remove them. 
We use Jigix to remove URLs, fixed the diacritization issues mentioned in the previous slide, removed English characters, removed special character Kashira, as it only has a calligraphic effect which does not affect diacritization, separated numbers that are stuck to Arabic words, and compressed multiple white spaces between any two words into a single space. We present our benchmark dataset extracted from the cleaned version of Tashkila after fixing its issues and adding the text of the Holy Quran. We extracted all the lines with a percentage of diacritized letters no less than 80%. This is done so that the dataset is mostly diacritized. We randomly chose 55,000 lines for our dataset, 5,000 of which are randomly chosen and split into validation and testing sets. This results in a training dataset with about 2 million words, validation and testing sets with a bit over 100,000 words. The letters with no diacritics in the whole dataset is close to 18%. The letters with one diacritic are about 77% and the letters that have Two diacritics on them are close to 5%. Just by googling the internet for Arabic text diacritization, one can find multiple online services. Most of them are closed source and they generally are rule-based. In this work, we reviewed six rule-based systems. Alisoft, Farasa, Harakat, Madamira, Mishkal, and Tashkila model all of which had issues with their output. Random examples are shown in this slide, where some input words might lose letters in the output, such as Ajra becomes Jara, and Waishroon becomes Waishroon. Some words might be duplicated multiple times, like the word Ay. Some characters are added like Lilladi or duplicated like Yu'adhin or add the dagger alif like Ar-Rahman which is a character that is usually read but not written. All systems provide diacritization as one of its services so we decided to include them in our comparison despite the issues we just described except for Alisoft due to the excessive amount of issues in the output. Other models' outputs were fixed manually, except for Harakat, where we skipped the 140 lines that had issues. Very few worked on diacritization using machine learning approaches, where instead of relying on linguistic rules to solve the problem, the system learns by example given a correctly labeled, appropriate, and big enough dataset. The first efforts in this direction were in 2015, when two teams presented similar approaches in two concurrent but independent papers. The first team was Bilenkov and Glass, whose system relied on no linguistic features or tools. The system was trained on dataset from Arabic tree bank dataset only, experimenting with feed-forward neural networks, recurrent neural networks such as bidirectional long short-term memory networks, and character level embeddings. The other team, led by Abanda, followed a similar approach, but with data from Arabic Tree Bank, Tashkila Corpus, and Holy Quran, achieving state-of-the-art performance after applying some language-dependent post-processing and error correction techniques. The last and most important work is the open source project Shakala, which was built by Barqawi and Zarruqi in 2017 using embeddings, BioLSTMs, batch normalization, and dense layers to process each time step of the recurrent neural network output, as shown in the model structure on the right. Belinkov's model performed poorly on our dataset. This is probably because it was trained on ATB only. Further work is needed to make it better. As for Abende's work, it's not available to test on our test set, 
neither open source nor closed source. So we will compare the rule-based systems with Shekala system by Barqawi and see that it does a much better job in diacritization. The commonly used evaluation metrics for the diacritization problem are the diacritic error rate and the word error rate. We redefined them where the diacritic error rate is the percentage of misclassified Arabic characters, whether the character has 0, 1, or 2 diacritics, and the word error rate is the percentage of Arabic words which have at least one misclassified Arabic character. Previous work used diacritic and word error rate definitions from Zaytuni. The problem with these definitions is, is that they take into consideration the numbers and punctuations when counting the number of characters and the number of words. This slide shows how Zaytuni's definitions results in reduced diacritic and word error rates when counting the non-Arabic characters. Here, only one character is misclassified but when counting commas and exclamation marks, the error rate is reduced in both diacritic and word error rates, where they should not be counted. A sample of the results for each of the systems are shown in this table. We can clearly see that the neural network approach outperforms the traditional rule-based approaches by a significant margin, where Shakala has 3.73% diacritic error rate and 11.19 word error rate and the best rule-based system which is Mishkal has 16.09% diacritic error rate and 39.78% word error rate. To conclude this work, we presented the first free-for-all claimed benchmark dataset for this problem extracted from Tashkila Corpus, we provided critical review for the currently existing systems and tools for Arabic text diacritization and perform an empirical study to compare the performance of six of them on our dataset showing that machine learning approaches easily dominate rule-based approaches. Moreover, we revised the, def the definitions of the most common accuracy measures used in Arabic text diacritization, diacritic error rate and word error rate. In order to enhance the reproducibility of our work, the claimed dataset is publicly available on GitHub along with all codes related to the cleaning process and comparison procedure. Future work will be done to solve the diacritization problem using feedforward neural networks recurrent neural networks, transformers, and convolutional neural networks. In the end, we want to thank you for listening and for your attention.